I'm Dr. Margaret Flowers. I'm a pediatrician, but I advocate full-time for a national single-payer health program. And um, I was one of the organizers that put this event together today on April 15th um, through a coalition of organizations. We call ourselves It's Our Economy. Us. Um, we're here. The significance of tax day is that Bank of America made a profit of $4.4 billion, but instead of paying any taxes, they paid no taxes. They actually got a refund of $1.9 billion. So while we're being told that we have a deficit and we have to cut our health care, cut our education. Corporations like Bank of America are taking our tax dollars for their profits and this is wrong and we have to, to change this and this is a beginning for us of bringing people together, educating them that it, it's not, we don't have to cut our social insurances, our social programs. What we have to do is start taxing the corporations in a, in a fair way, taxing the wealthy in a fair way, using that money to fund jobs for our people, education for our people, health care for our people. One of the main reasons I'm here is that when we were trying to push for health reform in, in Congress, what we've learned is, what we know, is that corporations run our political process, they run our corporate media, and that if we want to get real change, because we know what the solutions are when it comes to health care, jobs, education, the financial problems, we know the solutions, but because of concentrated corporate power, we can't get those solutions enacted. So we have to shift that power, and that's people power. It's us coming out, being active, resisting, moving our money out of these corporations, but it's also us using our votes and, and holding legislators accountable. So we're all about bringing people together from across the social and economic justice spectrum to work for change. Unfortunately, the dominant story that's getting out right now is that we have deficits at the federal level, that we have deficits at the state level, and that they're used to scare us into accepting these austerity measures. This has been coming for a while, and, and as the wealth inequality in this country has grown as we have, the people have become poorer and weaker. They've been able to impose more and more of these changes on us. Um, so the story is that the deficit problem can be fixed. We have the wealth in this country already to address our deficit issues. But we have to stand up and say tax the corporations, tax the wealthy. We have to defend our health care, our public education. I mean, it's ludicrous right now that people are applauding President Obama for his speech on Wednesday because he was only going to cut Medicare and Medicaid a little bit. Well, why are we even putting Medicare and Medicaid on the table to cut them at all? They're not the, they're not the problem. They're actually the most efficient parts of our healthcare system, and they're important for our most vulnerable population. So, exactly, we have to change the story. It's not about austerity. It's about increasing revenue and defending our social programs, what we need as human beings. It's absolutely critical um, that we build a culture of resistance. We've tried the usual tools of advocacy and change, of proposing laws, of calling our legislators. These things are not working. We're, we're easily ignored because we are we don't have the political power right now. So um, Howard Zinn said that we need to go where we're not supposed to go, say what we're not supposed to say, and stay when they ask us to leave. And this is a model that we're hoping to teach. We're hoping to bring more young people out today because young people are crucial to this struggle and, and start teaching them these lessons of how we fight back. As Chris said, Chris Hedges, the time for talking is over. It's time for action.